Well, hello and welcome to The Spirit Safe. My name's Rob. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. You might notice the light's a bit different because I put a new bulb in the uh, in the light above me, a bit of a brighter one. Um, so you might notice a bit of a change in the setup. It's a very low budget way to improve the lighting to move from uh, a 13 watt bulb to a 26 watt uh, LED. Anyway, um, what do we have this week? I've been trying to get whiskies from different countries. So I'm trying to try whiskies from countries you don't typically associate with uh, whiskey production. For example, England or Sweden or uh, Australia. And what we have this time is a Swiss whiskey. It's the Langatun Old Deer. It's from Bern in Switzerland. Um, from the Lang uh, Langenthal is the name of the uh, town or village where it's produced. Um, it I bought it from a Danish website actually that shipped to my mum in England and she brought it when she came to visit. Uh, it's bottled at 58.5% ABV, distilled December 2008, bottled June 2015, so six and a half years old, non chill filtered it doesn't say anything does it say anything about chill filtration uh i have down here that it's non chill uh possibly non chill filtered but it's bottled at fast stärker uh cask strength uh yeah 58.5 percent abv which is obviously a high uh abv so i doubt it's uh chill filter i don't even, even know if they have the uh the equipment necessary in switzerland for chill filtration um nice dark color and it's uh matured in a combination of sherry and ex chardonnay cast so that's not a combination i've ever knowingly had before so this will be interesting i've also never had a swiss whiskey or in fact any um spirits from switzerland i think the only thing that they produce in any great quantity is schnapsy type um fruit liqueurs and stuff which not really my uh, thing. Uh, I like the bottle. Uh, it's 50 CL bottle, cost me 79 euro. So it's quite expensive, but you know, don't expect a Swiss whiskey to be cheap. I quite like this little cute bottle. I do hate this sort of oil painting uh, design on the box, but there's plenty of information about the history of the distillery. Got quite a long history, um, but it does seem to. Uh, fade a little bit between 1857 and 2007. I suspect that it was 2007 that they started the whiskey distilling and in, in the interim period either the distillery wasn't doing anything or it was producing the schnapsy type liqueurs. I'm not 100% sure. So combination of um, ex Chardonnay and ex Sherry casks. So very different. And it has, it does have a young nose, but it's very, very bold. It's very, um, yes, it's young, a very, very full aroma on the nose. It's fruity and perfumed, and there's a lot of oak tannin going on there. Stewed tea, furniture polish, really robust on the nose. A lot of dried fruit, but also bananas, mangoes, kiwi are really, really, I mean, not so much at the moment, but a very, very distinctive note of root beer, which is kind of like a tamarind, I think. It does carry a strange medicinal note. Now, I don't mean a PT medicinal TCP note, but it does carry a little um wintergreen or um doctor's office odd disinfectancy note which is which is quite pleasant has got a little bit of creaminess starting to come through almost a pina colada type thing going on there with a, a sprig of mint Dried apricot, sweet wine. Wintergreen. 
cooling menthol at the back of the of the nose Christmas cake. Perfume, fragrant woods, candied notes, rosemary most definitely. Dry cocoa powder, bit of chocolate orange coming through. Interesting interplay with the Chardonnay and the sweet cherry. Um, it feels like the You can tell it's not just a wine cask, you can tell it's not just a sherry cask. Otherwise, robust, fruity, interesting, young note. Wow, very tannic on the palate. A little bit too busy. The oak in the arrival is certainly unrestrained, but it's a full flavor, full robust note on the nose. All those tannins coming straight at you wisp of smoke, a thick, rich mouthfeel, very, very spicy. There's a brown sugar note. It's palatable, but it's slightly hot and slightly dense with all of those oak tannins. Clashes maybe a little bit, so I, I can tell immediately that water is going to help us. And actually, I'll put some of that in as we're, as we're talking, because it Give it warm and just a little drop more. That was one and two drops, really. Um, so all those tannins, a little wisp of smoke, rich, slightly alkaline. Um, star anise. Hmm. Much better on the nose. Vivid fruits. Starting to come through chocolate, um, chocolate orange and mangoes, a tropical fruit medley starting to starting to come through. Less tannic, still some tannins on the nose, but the sweet sherry starts to come through. An odd, slightly vinegary. Um, That's what I'm looking for. Savory type note starts to come through. I did write down in my notes salad cream. And I thought that was crazy. But now, yeah, I do. I do pick up the vinaigrette type <laughs> note to it. Candy notes, confectionery, sweet fruits. Again, that fruit cocktail has started to edge up past the fairly, well, the very thick um, tannins that previously were really um, dominating this. Cooling menthol, mint tea, chocolate, wisp of smoke still, lots and lots of cinnamon. Sorry, you can probably hear the rain pouring outside because it's Vancouver and uh, we're in September now and the summer is over. So, bucketing down with rain, I'm afraid. Much better with a good dash of water. The initial overpowering tannic note that you get when you try this neat is replaced with a big brown sugar fruitiness. Bitter herbs start to come through. Sweet wine and sherry, more prominent. Uh, the, a slight dryness to it, plenty of spice, baking, cinnamon, 
juicy fruits and tropical fruits start to come through. And the Chardonnay starts to um, assert itself a little bit when the water's on. I feel like the Chardonnay adds a more easygoing fruitiness to this. It uh, when, when you add water, it comes through and it takes away the very harsh, very over, slightly overbearing tannins. A lot more cocoa and furniture polish starting to come through. Um, the finish is medicinal and herbal. Pomegranate, leather, bitter chocolates, cocoa, wisp of smoke, root beer and fresh ginger. The richness really continues on to the medium length uh, finish. It's slightly salty, a stewed Assam tea, spices and oily complexity uh, lingers there. Slightly olive note and it does end a little bit alkaline which is unusual. Um, so I'm really enjoying this. It's young, it's bold, it's, maybe it's a little bit expensive, but I'm very, very glad that I got to try it. Um, I think, you know, if you've got access to this for a reasonable price, give it a shot. It's certainly good whiskey. Um, give it some time and water to it, experiment, but I can't say you'll love it straight out of the bottle, but well, well worth a try. And you get to say that you tried a Swiss whiskey. Anyway, this has been my first Swiss whiskey. Hope you enjoyed uh, the review. Like, comment and subscribe and hope to see you again soon. Cheers. Bye bye.